These are in the ignition. Alright, well, here's the first test. We're going to get this thing pressurized to make sure it's going to hold pressure. We do fuel pressure. Make sure that stuff's working. Yep, we go through. When we start these back up after they've been down for some time, we go through steps. We good? No fuel squirt? Nope. Can we do a second one? Nothing? No fuel squirt? Good. That's what I'm mainly concerned about right now. Okay, that should be full pressure right there. Yep. You want me to start it now? Oh yeah, that's right. It needs oil. Oh shoot, we should do an oil change room. Fucking oil's got water in it, dude. Yeah. Can't do that. Okay, take two. Alright, so we just took the oil out just to show you how thin this oil is now because of the yeah, freeze in it. And it's got this weird color now too. It's not black, it's it's not even honey. Oh it's, look, you can actually see the coolant. Yeah, it's actually drawing the coolant up. And that you don't want to see in an oil change. That's not good. You don't want to see that in your cooling system either. Yeah, you can see the pretty colors that are coming up. The mix is the water and the oil. So, yeah. Might have to do two oil changes on this one, get it running, get this oil hot. Because the oil will bake the water off, but if it's ethylene glycol, that's a different story. It doesn't bake off quite so easy. It makes <laughs> a sticky oil. It doesn't do good. It's like patent adding pins oil. Paraffin wax. Yeah, it's just look how, look how easy that is just moving around. I, yeah, don't, I, mean, I don't know if I can put that in the oil bin. No, you can. Okay. they got a way to separate that. They can centrifuge it. With just, the water will sink to the bottom. All right, well... Monty's getting fresh oil, fresh cooling, and uh, we'll see what uh, we got after that. We'll be starting this thing very, very soon. Yuck. There's about a quart left. Yeah, I'll leave a quart out. Because after we run it, we're going to have to check the oil condition. It's about a quart low ish. It's about 75% flow. That's fine. Are right, we ready to start this? Yep. Alright, well, you ready? Go. Okay, here's the first turn. Did you shut it off? Yes, I did. This will kind of dampen the noise. This has to be on, anyways. Yeah. Alright, so this is going to be really loud, I guess. Hey, first, first start. Let's start right up. Well, that first one was different with the doorman. Looks like we got black smoke now. No white smoke. Well, it's got to burn off everything that's left and we can't get out. Well, it's not running away, so... You got any seeds that make that noise? Oh. Okay, well at this point, hoses are hot, heater's hot, the E-Prom belt's doing good, rev it up, sounds like a 3.8 again. So other than that, uh, we're going to check it in the morning, I'm going to show you the coolant level now, and this is why we leave them high when we first do this. In the morning, this will be right where it should be. So other than that, we'll check back here in the morning. Okay, so what's the final verdict? Did we get Monte to finally stop smoking? Look at that. No smoke. Monte is now a non-smoker again. Alright, got a little bit of drip like we should. So the cat's working. Looks like we got a drip point in the back of the muffler. That's pretty normal. Yep. Just about ready to go back to customer.
Make sure all the lights are off. They are. Good to go. Lot of body clean. Dry. We'll shut it off and redo that test to verify. And you can barely see the new pulley in there, but it's in there. The new dormant intake, 615180. Down here at the intake, nice and dry like it should be. Only area of concern I got left is the timing cover gasket. It's a little wet, but it could be from all the work, so we're going to wait on that one. Got to drive in the city, get about 3,000 miles on it. That's about how it goes. This is how it should look when you're done. Everything in its place. Well, it's dry, like it should be. There's that elbow I was talking about. That elbow you can't see because it's black. The plastic hasn't been replaced. You should replace it. Yeah, I really don't like it's nasty and that's what does it. Other than that, you can see Monte's a turn again. No kicks, no knocks. Good to go. All right, here's Monty's final test. Let's see if we get any coolant flow here. It's up to temperature. It's been running about 20 minutes now. Look at that. Dry as a bone, as it should be. You can actually see where the coolant was actually running away on this side. You can see where it's like kind of white or... I don't know, silverish kind of color compared to the rest. I'll put an arrow on it so you can actually see it. Yeah, Monty should not be doing that. He should not be leaking water here. No, no. Monty doesn't leak. Monty doesn't smoke. Monty just drives now, so. This is probably the first major repair this thing has had besides the transmission. And how can you tell if the transmission's been done in one of these? GM sent a plastic. A reusable gasket and it's beyond me why a transmission technician would take a good gasket and put a crap cork in but that's a lot of tear down just to replace that gasket the CV joint has to come out on this side a lot of technicians it's actually recommended for cork for replacement yeah but GM has a beautiful gasket that's there that's 60 bucks and it shouldn't it should be reused Cork gaskets like 20 two cents stupid it's not two cents that's like 40 bucks for cork no, it's 20 bucks for the cord. No, if you get the original GM side pan cover gasket, they're 60 bucks. Because they look similar to this, like the thermostat gasket. But they have an actual uh, rubber membrane on it. Alright, we have gone the mile for Monty. Let's see if Monty is going to drive. And does Monty smoke anymore? Nope. Monty is now a non-smoker. We're going to go on a test drive. We'll, we're going to take you along this time for it. Hold on. We'll get to the car. Test the brakes before you decide to go on a bad hell. I don't like that. Is that must. Wow, I like the brakes. They're good, Kevin. Right? Yeah. I love brakes, dude. It's my favorite thing. I'll tell you what, you're definitely better brake men than I am. Alright, let's go give Monty a little flogging just to make sure we get some bubbles out. Other than that, it's good to go. Now, I, I wasn't watching it, or I wasn't seeing any uh, deflection in the temperature. It stayed constant. Oh, I like the brakes, man. I barely haven't touched them. Stupid um, safety child windows. Oh, yeah, the window, window only halfway. goes down halfway. It's like 99 degrees. I'm dying back here. Well, the front window goes all the way down. Yeah, she's gonna like these brakes. They are really, there's a lot of pepper here. And a tire rotation, too. All right, let's see how this thing gets up to speed. Woo! Shut up, money. You know you want to go home. Well, I'll tell you what, that car would pull to about 120, and then that was it. They didn't have all the governors in it either. What do you mean 120? 
they didn't have a shutoff limiter like the new Oldsmobiles do. I hit 120 miles on building this truck. Granted, I was packing the motor for everything I had, but I was doing it. Yeah, that. but that thing had yours had that electronic shift program in it that wouldn't let it do stupid things break. The original didn't. The original, you could run that thing almost 60 miles an hour in first, 85 in second. Spokane, no matter how good you line the car, the, it's, gonna it's, it's the type of roads, and, you'll, and Alex, you'll, you'll learn that pretty soon. Uh, the way they do the roads, they like kind of like angle them. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, it, it sucks balls. They're angled wrong, and you'll fill your car and get your car because of people die. So no matter what you do, you're never going to have a straight steering wheel in Spokane. Nope, the only time I ever get in a wheel alignment is when I'm burning tires. If not, whatever. Basically like the Mustang. Well, exactly like the Mustang. I didn't like the those Camaros though. Ah, uh, I looked mean, ran, they looked ranchy. Yeah, they, they were just as fast as the Mustangs. Yeah, so far it's, it's a little sluggish at first. I, don't, I think it's just a gear ratio in this thing. I think it's got the 306 final output. Wait, this is the 1465. No, so yeah. Five, but they have two output ratios, 342 and 306. And how you can tell is you won't have quite out of the bottom of the hole, but you'll carry power all the way through the RPM. I don't know if this one has adaptive shift management. It does. Is this uh, OBD2? It's OBD1, oh. but... So but can you put a tune on it? You can burn a tune on this one. You have to change the prong. After 96, you can just you know, put it on a computer and get it. But no, this one has to be burned. This one was enhanced onboard diagnostics one, so it gave some live feed as far as setting codes, but the codes are still the original, they're non-PO codes in this car. But you can't read them because of the fact that you need that a dealership. You have to have a tech one to read it. Well that and a dealership computer. You can buy it, you're gonna spend a good amount of money on it. Alright, let's get money in bath. Well, I, I like. I think project went well. Um, it feels good. Brakes feel great. The engine's running great. Heater's nice and hot. And you can't ask for much more for a daily driver. Now we gotta do the Shadow Hill test. Well, me and you are wearing mechanic shirts, so we can pull over. I'm sure we can pull off the story that we had to steal this car. Well, and we have the keys, so it's kind of hard to call the owner. Yeah. Stay at 35 miles per hour. Make sure you're in third. I am in third. Okay, there you go. I'm doing 40. Well, that's, that's all you need to do. See what I mean. All right, folks, you can see. Bills and Bills driving great again. Monty's happy, nice and clean. Sounds great, runs great. Stops on a dime, starts on a dime. She's gonna be very, very happy. It's a very reliable car again. And other than that, we are done with this one. We're moving on to the next project. So if you like these kind of teardowns, subscribe. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching.